Okay, so what we're going to do in section 6 is uh, we're going to solve these radical equations and uh, they're a little bit different, but they're, they're not too bad. A couple things that you want to keep in mind when you solve these guys is, number one, uh, the very first thing that you want to do is isolate the radical. In other words, wherever the radical is, get it all by itself. There needs to be nothing else with it at all. Okay. Number two, the second step that you want to do is raise each side of the equation to whatever power will eliminate the radical. And we'll see some examples of that in a second. And then number three, you want to solve the polynomial equation that you have left. And sometimes it'll be a polynomial, sometimes it won't be. It just depends on what it looks like. So for example, on this guy right here, uh, I'm going to double check and see if the, is if the radicals isolated. Well, there's nothing over here except the cube root of 2x plus 7. Okay, so that means that what I want to do is I want to raise both sides to the same power, but I want to eliminate the radical. And so if I'm dealing with the cube root, then I'm going to cube both sides. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. The beauty about this is that on the left, I get 2x plus 7. And then on the right, 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3. That's 27. And so now then, I've got an... an an expression that we've solved a thousand times in our lives, if not more. And uh, so this guy's going to be 2x equals 20, and then divide by the x, or div excuse me, divide by 2, and x equals 10. And uh, that's, that's really uh, all you need to do to solve it. Now, the big deal when you're working with radicals is always check your answers. Always check your answers because sometimes when you're working with radicals you'll get something that won't work. So when we check this guy we're just going to take the cube root of 2 times 10 plus 7 and that's going to be equal to 27. So when we solve this guy out we have the cube root of 20 plus 7 by the way, that's not 27, that should be 3. And that's going to be the cube root of 27, and that is 3. Okay, so here's a little bit of a different problem. And uh, again, it's going to be the same exact steps. We want to get the radical all by itself. And then once we get the radical all by itself, uh, we're going to... Uh, square both sides because that's what we're dealing with is a square root here so when I'm looking at this guy the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 6.3 and I, I know that we've got some decimals running around but it's it's not too bad just punch it into your calculator and let's get in the habit of listing out three decimal places so this is actually going to be 8.651 is equal to the square root of 1 0 1, 3, minus P. And then we're going to raise both sides to the same power. Well, if I have a square root, to undo a square root, I'm going to square everything. So when I square 8.651, that's going to give me 74.836, and that's going to be equal to 1, 0, 1, 3, minus P. Well, even though it's all decimally and ugly looking, we're now down to a problem that we can work out. And uh, I'll just go ahead and subtract 1, 0, 1, 3 from both sides. And so that's going to give me on the, on the right a negative P. And then on the left, you're going to have negative 938.16. And then when you divide both sides by that negative 1, you get P equal to 938.164. So again, um, you need to check this and make sure that if you put 938 into the radical that you get a number that works. And so the check on this guy... It's going to look like this.
going to look like this. And what you're going to do is just work that math out on the inside and make sure that you get the same thing. Well, right off the bat it looks good because underneath I'm not going to get a made up number. I'm going to get a real number under there. So when I subtract th those two numbers, I get 54.5 equals 6.3 times the square root of 92.836. And when I take the square root of that, I get 54.5 equals 6.3 times 9.635. And so when I multiply those two together, I should get 54.5. Okay, so check out this example. Uh, notice that we got 4x to the 3 halves. And again, this is, this is going to be your radical guy right here. So we want to get him all by himself, and we're going to do that by dividing 4 on both sides. That gives me x to the 3 halves equals, and then punch into your calculator 108 divided by 4. That's going to be 27. And then we're going to raise each side to the same power. Well, I want, I want, I want x to be to the first power. So I'm just going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, oops, not three halves, but two thirds. And so on the left, I have x. On the right, I'm going to have the cube root of 27 squared. And this is math that we can do. So x is going to be uh, 3 squared, which is 9. And again, just a real quick check to make sure that we're going the right direction. So this is going to be 4 times 9 to the 3 halves. And 9 is the only thing that gets the 3 halves. Okay? 4 doesn't get it. So this is 4 times the square root of 9 cubed. And this needs to be 108. Well, that's going to be 4 times 3 cubed, which is... 4 times 27, which we hope is 108. Alright, so on this guy, we want to get the radical by itself. And the radical is actually all of this, this whole thing right here. So to do that, we're going to add 1 to both sides. And that leaves me with x plus 2 to the 3 fourths equals 8. And then what we're going to do is we're going to raise both sides to the same power. And again, we want that 3 fourths to be a power of 1. So we multiply by the reciprocal, which is going to be 4 thirds. And so this is going to be 4 thirds. And that gives us then x plus 2. Like the radical all goes away. And I'm left with 8 to the 4 thirds power. And so this is the same thing as x plus 2 equaling the cube root of 8 to the 4th. Well, the cube root of 8 is 2. So this is x plus 2 equals 2 to the 4th, which is x plus 2 equals 16, which is 14. And then... Once we get that, we check it in our original to make sure that it's going to work. So I'm going to have 14 plus 2 to the 3 fourths minus 1, and that's going to equal 7. So when I do this, I'm going to have 16 to the 3 fourths minus 1 equals 7. And 16 to the 3 fourths is the same thing as the fourth root of 16 cubed. Well, the fourth root of 16 is 2 cubed, which is 8, and we hope that this works out to be 7. 
Okay, definitely on this guy we're going to want to uh, square out both sides right off the bat. Number one, we've got the radical all by itself. And so since the radical is all by itself, we can go ahead and square. Now, x plus 1 squared, uh, the common mistake with this is to say x plus 1 squared is x squared plus 1. But this is not true, so don't do it. Uh, it is, though, x plus 1 times x plus 1. And if you can remember the pattern for this, you don't have to FOIL. And uh, the pattern is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So that's if we have a plus b squared. And how does that work on this problem? Well, x squared is x squared. 2 times x times 1 is 2x. 1 squared is 1. And then the square root of 7x plus 15 squared is 7x plus 15. Now what I want to do is reorganize this so that I have 0 on the right. So I'm going to subtract 7x and 15. That's going to give me x squared minus 5x minus 14 equals 0. And uh, what I want to do here is try and see if I can factor this guy out. So I'm going to have x and x. What times what is 14? So that's going to be 1 and 14, 2 and 7. So it's got to be minus 7 plus 2. And then set each piece equal to 0. And so I get x equals 7 and x equals negative 2. And you have to check these. You have to check because one of these may or may not work. We, we just, we don't know. And uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take um, negative 2 and put it in. So here's my negative 2. So I'm going to have negative 2 plus 1 equals the square root of 7 times negative 2 plus 15. Here's why the checking is important. I get negative 1 equals the square root of negative 1, of plus 1, of plus 1. And um, there's no way, there's no way, no how, that I can take the square root of a number and get a negative. So that's why checking is so important. We cannot use this guy. Check the second part. So it's going to be 7 plus 1 equals the square root of... 7 times 7 plus 15. And uh, so that's going to be 8 equals the square root of 64. Well, hey, that is true. So uh, when you're working these problems out, you just you have to check. All right, on this, on this section, or on this problem, the one thing we want to try and do is isolate the radical. But when we do that, we still have a radical with stuff with it. So it doesn't matter what I do with that negative 1 it's going to be lingering around. And uh, that just messes things up. So it doesn't matter where your 1 is, but what I'm going to do is just leave it with the original. And uh, we're going to go ahead and square both sides. Because that's the only other option left. Now, the right side squares out really, really nice. And so the right side's going to square out to... Let me, the right side squares out to... Uh, 3 minus x. The left side, though, that's, that's going to take some work. So we've got the square root of x plus 2 plus 1 times the square root of x plus 2 plus 1. And this, this foils out exactly like the other one, but it's a little harder to see. So uh, when I foil this guy, I'm going to go first, last, and then these two. And so the square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 2 is x plus 2. And then the square root of x plus 2 times 1 is the square root of x plus 2. And then the square root of x plus 2. And then 1. So this is going to end up being uh, x plus 2 square roots of x plus 2. And then plus 3.
and uh, and then what we're going to do is um, subtract the the three and uh, try and see if we can't get the square root again isolated. So we're going to subtract the three and subtract the x. And what's going to happen here is three goes away. That's nice. And x becomes two negative two x. And then we're going to divide by 2 again. So what we're going to end up with is the square root of x plus 2 equals negative x. So this is a this is going to be a kind of a drawn out problem. Really, it's got some places to kind of go tricky. Uh, but now to get rid of this radical, we square both sides. And when I do that, I get x plus 2 equals x squared and I'm going to go ahead and get a zero on the left this time so I'm going to subtract x and subtract 2 and that gives me 0 equals x squared minus x minus 2 and again I want to try and factor this guy if I can and I think he does so this is going to be x minus 2 x plus 1 and then set each piece equal to 0. So x equals 2 or negative 1. Whoops, negative 1. And again, you have to check these guys. You have to check. So when I do uh, 2, when I go with 2, then I'm going to have the square root of 2 plus 2 plus 1 equals the square root of 3 minus 2. Well, this is square root of 4 plus 1 equals 3 minus 2, which is 1, square root of 1. So this is going to be 2 plus 1 and that would be 1. So it looks like the 2 is not going to work so we can't use him. Uh, let's now check negative 1. So the square root of negative 1 plus 2 plus 1 and so this is going to be the square root of 1 plus 1 is equal to the square root of 4 and that's going to be 1 plus 1 equals 2 and that's true so the only guy that we can pick from this side is the x equals negative 1. The other way that you can do this example and the previous example is to graph both of them, graph both sides of the equation, and find where they intersect. And I'll do a separate tutorial and, uh, and show you how to use your calculator.